So we're gonna go ahead and look at the inner workings of our uh, lower unit, or our gear case, basically how this motor transfers the power from the drive shaft coming down to uh, power to push the boat forwards and backwards, and of course shifting forward and reverse. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and drain the uh, oil out of the gear case just so it's a little less messy when we finally open up the, uh, the back seal there. And we'll go ahead and uh, take a little 10 millimeter socket here, and break free both these bolts. And it helps to start with this uh, neutral, uh, not mandatory, but it does help. And so now we got both of our bolts broken free here. We'll take our little flathead screwdriver, wedge it in the side of our seal there. That breaks the seal free. And uh, that came off pretty easy for us. If you're in salt water, it might take a little more prying and soaking it with uh, some uh, penetrating lubricant. We'll just wiggle this on back. And there we are. So we have Underneath our prop, our prop shaft, we have our seal there that protects all the fluid from staying inside the motor so it doesn't So what we're looking at is our reverse ring gear here, our dog right here that's connected to our prop shaft. This is the entire prop shaft. And these splines here hold the dog in place so it can't turn. So when the propeller turns, so does the dog right there. It's all connected. So this is actually what it looks like in four gear. Now, of course, there'd be the other ring gear on the side here. The other ring gear is still inside of our lower unit there. And uh, it's important to note that the ring gear, as well as our forward ring gear, always turn. There's a pinion inside here that uh, we'll take a look at. And that pinion gear is always turning uh, because it's connected to the drive shaft. So as soon as the motor starts to run, the pinion gear turns. It's directly connected to the ring gears. The ring gears are always spinning. And the only thing that makes the prop not spin is either that dog being in neutral, so it's not touching either one. If it goes into forward gear, then it would touch the forward spinning ring gear, which would make the dog want to turn and of course make the propeller uh, shaft turn. Or if we shift into reverse, push it all the way to reverse, then it engages with the reverse ring gear, which is turning the opposite direction and will make our propeller start to turn the other direction. There we go, there's reverse. You can note there's a little bit of free play there. Now, when you hear clicking when you're shifting, clicking is not a good thing. Clicking is basically this sharp edge here, this flat edge, starting to hit the flat edge of the ring gear, and it's bypassing it. It tries to engage and then skips past it. So every time you hear a click, all three of these little dog teeth here are bouncing past the ring gear and they're grinding themselves down. They become rounded out, and as well as the ring gear. So if you do that enough times, the motor just will not go into gear anymore. It'll be hard to go into gear at first where it, uh, as you apply more power, it starts to bounce out. It pushes the, uh, basically the, pushes this dog forward because it's rounded out. It has enough force to overcome the cam in there that's pushing the dog back into reverse and it bounces out of gear. You know, just bounces out just like that, pushes it forward and it won't stay uh, in reverse typically. Reverse is typically what will fail first. So, how you would avoid that over time is just shifting less. And more importantly, when you do have to shift, shift quickly. Do not allow the motor to click. Do not let it hang out in that in-between zone where it's click, 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 clicking. It really needs to quickly shift from forward to neutral to reverse. And uh, as you can see here, just by default, the way the springs are set up in here, the motor is designed to fail in forward. So typically you're gonna lose your reverse gear. Uh, and also with that spring assist, helping it to push into forward, it usually makes it shift into forward a little cleaner. So when you're slowly shifting, it actually takes up the slack for you and quickly engages it so you get less clicking in forward than you do in reverse. So you really have to be conscious between forward and reverse, but anytime you're going from neutral to one gear or the other, shift quickly. Don't let it click and bounce around in there. So that is our lower unit, what it looks like inside there. So there's a look inside of our lower unit or inside of the gear case. That's our forward gear, our, our forward pinion. And just in front of that is, uh, or through the center of that rather, is the cam that selects uh, your forward, neutral, and reverse. Currently we're in reverse, we'll go ahead and shift into neutral. And then all the way up into forward. And so that allows the pin to slide all the way forward. Then we could push the pin a little bit back. 
there's neutral, and then all the way down to reverse. So we're looking at the lower unit off the motor here, and what we're gonna look at is the cam or the shift rod, but actually pushes that little uh, push rod on the prop shaft and pushes the dog from forward to neutral to reverse. So we'll remove that guy there. And this is our cam here. We'll let some of the oil drain off there. And that pin, like we talked about before, pushes that dog from forward into neutral and of course all the way back into reverse. So that's how we select our gears. We'll go ahead and start putting this back together. So we got all our parts together. We'll go ahead and get our motor shifted into forward. So we got the cam all the way out of the way there. We'll just give this a little wiggle, try to help uh, get the pinion teeth lined up uh, with our ring gears. We'll reinstall our two screws on our seal. We can go ahead at this point and shift into neutral again. And uh, that'll help us just get the uh, prop lined up there. Shift into neutral again. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, reinstall the screws for our seal, get our seal tightened up. Then we can go ahead and refill our lower unit with oil. Uh, you can check out the video right there if you're not sure how to fill the lower unit with oil and uh, you're done. So uh, that's basically how the lower unit works. If there's any uh, questions on it or, you're, or you got any parts to replace, uh, they're pretty simple and easy to order and to take apart there. Uh, shoot us any questions you have in the comments or leave us a note on the website and uh, we'll try to help you out with any uh, questions or specifics on there. Thanks for watching and good luck.